Chapter 1 Gospel The first four books of the New Testament report events about Jesus, starting with his genealogy, his life, some of his teachings, death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven. At some point in time, somebody gave titles to these books. The title, Gospel According to Matthew, is justified if the book is really containing the gospel of Jesus. Paul talks about his gospel, and he certainly means the gospel of Jesus, but he does not narrate events about Jesus and his disciples. Even secular dictionaries explain gospel as the teaching or the revelation of Christ. Everything Jesus said, as recorded in the four gospels, if we eliminate the repetitions written by the other authors and read it all, would take no longer than two Sunday sermons in one of our churches. How can the gospel be explained in such a short but comprehensive way? God created Adam and Eve and put them in the Garden of Eden. They were created as intelligent as we are, but they were not able to care for themselves. God's intention for them was to live in a relationship of total dependency on Him. God loved them and cared for them, giving them what they needed, and they lived a carefree and happy life. A relationship of love, as God intended to have with them, is not a real one unless both parties freely choose to be part of it. As they were limited in their abilities to care for themselves, they could not choose to leave the relationship, or stay, by their own choice. They were trapped in it because of that inability to take care of themselves. In order to create fair conditions for them, God put two trees in the middle of the garden, trees with fruit that was designed specifically to change them permanently both physically and mentally, in opposite ways. Eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil meant that they would choose not to stay in that relationship of total dependency on God, but to gain the ability and the knowledge to be fit to live their lives by themselves, and not necessarily to need God anymore. Also, God forbade them to eat from that tree, warning them that they would die on the day they would eat of it. Eating from the tree of life meant that, regarding their abilities, they would remain in the same limited way as God created them, but they would confirm their choice to remain in that relationship of total dependency on God forever, sealing it by their choice and living eternal. It was a simple choice. Stay dependent on God or separate yourself from Him and live your own life. Unfortunately, they chose the separation and died that day as God warned them. Their physical death happened a very long time after that, but they died spiritually. Desiring to live independently comes from a selfish attitude, which is not according to God's nature. Their bodies changed into sinful bodies, and they were not compatible to be in God's presence anymore. They became spiritually dead. God decided to solve the human problem of the fallen nature in the flesh by sending His Son to die in order to pay for our redemption. Until that time would come, God gave His people the law to live by and, by fulfilling the requirements of His law, to earn their acceptance and justification before God. Apostle Paul tells us that the law was a guardian to keep us for the faith, which was to come at the appointed time. Under the law, for every mistake and trespass, people needed to bring a sacrifice to pay with blood for sin. They were supposed to improve their lives and behavior, and by doing so, to get back into the intended relationship with God. This was not possible, because as soon as they brought their sacrifices to the altar and turned their backs to go about their daily dealings, they started sinning again. It was an unending circle of sinning and bringing sacrifices for their sins, and nobody was able to improve their lives and to get back to the genuine relationship with God. Because by human endeavors keeping the law didn't work, Jesus came to fulfill the law regarding the redemption from the sinful life by paying for us, one for all times, with his own blood. By doing so, he made the way to God free for everybody who would recognize their need for salvation, take a humble attitude, believe and accept Jesus as Lord in their lives, and thus become reunited with God. Because of the fallen nature of our bodies and minds, because of the religious ways of thinking, 
and because of the selfish ambition of doing it all by ourselves, we are not willing to recognize the need for a Savior, for Jesus. Most of us do this at least partially. We accept His sacrifice for the sins of the past and try to live a holy life from now on by ourselves. This is not what God intended for us by sending Jesus. It is the same decision made in the Garden of Eden all over again. We need to be aware that the sinful body is not going to change when we accept Jesus. We inherited the willingness and the selfishness of being our own lords from Adam. And if God would change our bodies, the flesh, into sinless bodies, we would become proud and expect reward for our holy lives. By remaining in those sinful bodies, we stay dependent on God, because without Him, we are not going to make it. We are not going to escape from the lusts of our flesh. Jesus comes and lives in us through the Holy Spirit as soon as we accept Him. We are supposed to give up our ambition of living for ourselves and give our lives, body and spirit, to Jesus to live for God. This works by faith, and we are not going to feel a change in our flesh. We need to believe what God says. Only after we believe and put our faith in Him will we start to live the life He wants us to live. The gospel of Jesus is about gaining our position of total acceptance and justification before God, but not based on our works and performances. It is based on what Jesus did. He paid with His life, and He redeemed us. By thinking that Jesus just paid for our sins doesn't get us anywhere. We are still lost. What Jesus did puts us back into the relationship with God as it was in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve had no sin in them because they lived in total dependency on God. Now, if we choose to think of the things of the Spirit all the time, we give the Holy Spirit control over our minds and bodies, and we become partakers of God's divine nature. We are in Christ. Jesus and God are one, and we are in Jesus. Our reunion with God happens in the spiritual because of the fallen nature of our bodies, and this is why it works only by faith. In order to see the results in our lives, in our bodies, we need to choose to walk in the Spirit, having our minds on the spiritual things, and if we do so, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Only so are we able to stop sinning. The difference between being under the law and being in Christ is very simple but also very essential and vital. Under the law, one needs to do the right things in order to become accepted by God. It lays in the future, and one needs to try hard to get there. In Christ, we have arrived there already, past tense. Not because we did well, but because Jesus paid for us what was required by God's law. He took our place and did it for us. We are accepted and justified, it is crucial to understand and accept it by faith, because in the carnal state, there is no proof for it. It is hard to get your mind around it. Apostle Paul says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. He also says that the carnal man needs to die. As long as we want to do it by our works, we are still in the carnal, in the old man, who needs to die. Only by a humble attitude and faith are we able to accept it? If we do so, we have arrived, past tense, back to the Garden of Eden and to the relationship with God as He intended from the very beginning. From now on, we have no worries, because the Holy Spirit teaches us all things and guides us in everything we do. We do not live according to our plans anymore. We don't live for ourselves anymore. We live for God. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit who is in us permanently, and through whom Jesus lives in us. Just to emphasize it, Jesus fulfilled the requirements of God's law for us by dying in our place. By doing so, He made it possible for us to be reunited with God. We are justified, and now there is no condemnation in us because we are in Him. We are accepted, and we don't need to struggle anymore. God is love. He is in us and His love flows through us towards other people. Jesus said that love is the fulfillment of the law. Because of His love for us, He satisfied God's demands for righteousness by dying according with the requirements of the law 
and he still fulfills the law in us by manifesting his love towards others through us. Our relationship with God is restored based on Jesus alone, based on what he did to reunite us with him, and based on what he still does at present by living his own life in us.